Each year for Pride Month, I like to pick out a few flags representing different communities and make art dolls to celebrate them. The asexual or ace community is one that doesn't seem to get a lot of visibility, so I thought it would be cool to show them some love and make a doll in ace flag colours, black, grey, white and purple. The ace flag was designed in 2010 by members of an online forum called the Asexuality, Visibility and Education Network. The flag is now widely accepted by the community and I think it needs to be seen more, so let's get started. I've got some purple striped cotton that I'm going to use for the arms. One of the trickiest things about making a small size doll can be matching up the stripes. My little quilting iron is great for this. I'm folding over a single piece of fabric. I make sure all the stripes are directly in line, then I iron it so it won't move. I pin it in place, then line up the template against the fold, so there will just be one seam down the back of the arm. I'm Jo by the way, I'm a full-time doll artist based on a narrowboat in Wales. Because the arm pieces are so tiny, I leave the fabric quite a bit wider than the template. This makes it easier to line up the stripes exactly. It also stops the fabric getting chewed up by my sewing machine. I keep the stitches as small as I can. The bottom end is left open for stuffing. I'll be stuffing the pieces quite firmly with kapok, so I need to double stitch all the seams to reinforce them and stop them bursting. Because I left that fabric a bit wider, it makes it easier to control it as I'm sewing. I've chosen some antique silver finish metal beads to join the arms and legs. As usual, I'm using Gutterman top stitch thread for jointing. I thought about using the same purple stripes for the legs, but I decided on grey and white. I'm going to add something to those later, which will give it a bit of contrast. The hands are tiny, so they can be a bit fiddly. I don't like to overcomplicate things, so I keep the hands quite simple, like a sort of mitten shape. I'm closing the wrist end with ladder stitch, then I'll use the same thread to stitch through the bead and attach the hand to the arm. I'm leaving the limbs for a little while to work on the face. I shade the eye area with Derwent Colorsoft pencils. The shading creates a hollow effect around the button eyes and gives them more depth. I'll build up a few layers of pigment, blending as I go until I get a nice dark shadow. I used to find it difficult to fade the shading out towards the edges until I found the Derwent blending pencils. These actually deepen the shading and give it a much more professional finish. I'll give it a coat of fixative spray, then while it's drying I'll go back to the legs. 
I want to give her some lace up boots so I've mixed a deep purple shade in acrylic paint with a bit of fabric medium to give it more flexibility and stop it bleeding onto the fabric. I recently started using Liquitex fabric medium. This doesn't need heat setting. I still give it a blast with a hairdryer though just to dry it a bit faster. The legs are hinge jointed directly onto the body. I'll sew the clothing over the top of them so the stitches and knots will all be hidden. I'm careful not to pull the thread too tight, I want the legs to have enough movement so she can be placed either in a sitting or a standing position. I'm not going to attach the arms just yet, I'll come back to those later. I've picked out some dark smoky grey buttons for the eyes. I'll stitch these right through the head so they sit tightly to the face. This means that there are exposed stitches on the back of the head but I'm going to cover these with the hair so it's not really an issue. If you're enjoying this video don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe so you don't miss the next one. I don't add too much detail to the face, but I do like to give my doll some gothic eyeliner with Derwent Line Maker pens. These are one of the few permanent waterproof fine liner pens that don't contain any gelatin, so they're vegan friendly. I'll put a link to them in the description. A simple curve for the mouth with little shading and that's all she needs. The burnishing pencil from the Derwent blending set works really well for blending small details. I've made her a dress from black cotton with some grey cotton lace trim and grey lace underwear. These are hand stitched directly onto the torso. I'm attaching the arms with bead joints. I stitch loosely right through the shoulder and through the bead hole so the arms will hang naturally. I don't want them to be stiff, so I'm making sure I don't over tighten the thread. I fasten it off under the back of the bodice where the stitches will all be hidden. I've machine sewn the skirt and gathered the waist with a running stitch so I just need to arrange it so it's gathered evenly and stitch it onto the doll. I've never really made removable clothing, that's something I'd like to try one day but for this style of doll fixed clothing is fine. I'm using Signet Seriously Chunky Acrylic Yarn for the hair. This can be needle felted and heat styled. It has nice long fibres when it's unravelled and it comes in an awesome range of colours. 
I'm taking extra care needle felting around the stitches so I don't break the needles. I'm using the Clover pen style tool with three 38 gauge felting needles. I was undecided how to arrange the colours for the hair. I thought about going front to back with black at the front and purple at the back, but I just felt she looked better with the brighter colours on the top. I'll pull out the loose fibres and then style it with ceramic straighteners. Straightening makes the acrylic look really shiny. I found a little ace card charm in my stash which makes a really cute little necklace on some grey velvet ribbon. If you'd like to see how I made a rainbow hair doll, watch this video next and I'll see you next time. Bye!